the Lord be with you, and welcome again to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost, we follow the order of Matins. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. We turn to Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 696 in Lutheran service book, O God, my faithful God. O God, my faithful God, true fountain ever flowing, without whom nothing is, all perfect gifts bestowing, Give me a healthy frame, and may I have within a conscience free from blame, a soul unstained by sin. 
Grant me the strength to do with ready heart and willing whatever you command, my calling here fulfilling that I do what I should while trusting you to bless the outcome for my good, for you must give success. Keep me from saying words that later need recalling. Guard me lest idle speech may from my lips be falling. But when within my place I must and ought to speak, then to my words give grace lest I offend the weak. Lord, let me win my foes with kindly words and actions, and let me find good friends for counsel and correction. Help me as you have taught to love both great and small, and by your Spirit's might to live in peace with all. Let me depart this life, confiding in my Savior. By grace receive my soul, that it may live forever. And let my body have a quiet resting place within a Christian grave, and let it sleep in peace. And on that final day, when all the dead are waking, stretch out your mighty hand, my deathly slumber breaking. Then let me hear your voice, redeem this earthly frame, and bid me to rejoice with those who love your name. The Old Testament reading for this day is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be wise, still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. 
Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Most of us are out to enjoy life as much as we can. We plan our work and our play so that we get the most pleasure with the least amount of pain. Some people go on that way throughout their lives, thinking they're really living. We can get so caught up in this pursuit of life as we know it that we can lose or choose to ignore the Bible's view of what it means to be living. From God's perspective, what we call our life is really much less alive than we think it is. Real life, as God knows it and gives it, is found and delivered in the living bread. To be blunt, what we call life is full of death. Physical death is a certainty for us. There's no way we can avoid it. We see death in the plants and the animals around us. As little as we like it, we also see death in the people we know and love. It's gotten to the point where death is often called a natural part of life, even though according to Genesis, it's not natural at all. While our physical death is treated as normal and natural, albeit something to be avoided as long as possible, we often completely ignore the subject of our spiritual death. We like to think that all of us enter this world as innocent little children. The Bible, however, is very clear. All of us are conceived and born sinners. We start life out as spiritually dead people. Not innocent, not living ones. The sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden has been passed down to every one of us. We call it original sin, that is, the sin of our origin. This sin is the evil that spawns every thought, word, deed, and desire that is contrary to the word and will of God. Those are the actual sins that we normally think of when we talk about sin. The terror and tragedy of all this is that unless things change for us, we will wind up dead eternally. Yes, that's right. An endless torment in hell awaits those who are sinners outside the loving presence of God. We can try to delude ourselves and believe we're all going to heaven, 
that hell doesn't exist except maybe for a few really bad people. But the lies we tell ourselves will never be powerful enough to change the truth God has set before us. When those who are spiritually dead die physically, they enter the unending punishment that God has prepared for their sins. Hell. We think we're so alive. But we are really dead. For the death of sin is in us. Yes, death is in us. Life is found only in God. For in him we live and move and have our being. Without God we have no life. We have nothing. So what are we dead people to do? Well, dead people can't do anything. We can't get up, walk around, or fix our problems. We're dead. But thanks be to God, God has reached into our dead lives to take care of our death for us. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And God has sent his Son into this world to bring life to us dead people. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. So Jesus comes to us dead people and says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. What's he talking about here? John tells us that the Jews argued with each other about this. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They couldn't figure it out. But God has given us the answer. For Jesus gave his flesh for the life of the world when he died on the cross. In his suffering, Jesus suffered for our sins. In his death, Jesus died the death we deserve. The punish physical punishment of physical death and then the spiritual punishment of hell, of being wholly and totally rejected by God the Father. In his resurrection, Jesus broke the power of hell, death, and sin once and for all. And now through Jesus, we can be united with him in resurrected bodies and live, yes, really live with him forever. How is this union, this resurrection, this life possible? Not through anything you or I do. It's all the gift of God, the gift of faith, of lasting trust in his words and promises. It's a gift given in and through Jesus Christ. For truly, truly I say to you, unless you eat the, son of, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. How do we eat this flesh and drink this blood? How do we get this saving, life-giving faith? How do we, dead people, receive the forgiveness of our sins and the life that goes with it? Through God's word and sacraments. Now, we should note a long-standing misunderstanding about this text. Many people have thought that because Jesus he is talking here in terms of bread and eating his flesh and drinking his blood, that these words are referring directly and only to the Lord's Supper, to Holy Communion. But there are problems if we jump right to the Lord's Supper from this text. First of all, Jesus' words would then imply that anyone who did not receive the Lord's Supper could not be saved. After all, he did say, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. But while the Bible teaches that the Lord's Supper is very important, Nowhere does it teach that the Lord's Supper is absolutely necessary to salvation. Another concern is that according to John, Jesus spoke these words long before that glorious night in the upper room where he instituted the Lord's Supper. In other words, no one listening to him would have any idea what Jesus was talking about if he was referring directly to the Lord's Supper at this point. A better way to understand these words about eating Jesus' flesh and drinking his blood is to hear them as a description of saving faith. Faith in Jesus doesn't just hold him out there somewhere and say from a distance, yes, I believe that. Faith in Jesus receives all of Jesus and makes him a part of our lives, part of the essence and fabric of our very being. God feeds this living bread to us through various means. Our Lutheran confessions call us to the gospel, which gives guidance and help against sin in more than one way. Because God is extravagantly rich in his grace. First, through the spoken word, in which the forgiveness of sins is preached to the whole world, which is the proper function of the gospel. 
Second, through baptism. Third, through the holy sacrament of the altar. Fourth, through the power of the keys, and also through the mutual conversation and consolation of brothers and sisters. That's from the Schmalkald Articles, in the third part. Through all these means, God delivers Jesus to us and invites us to partake of this living bread. This is the living bread that is active in us every day, not just on Sundays. Jesus takes the dead lives we live Monday through Saturday, forgives our sins, and brings us to life again in him. As St. Paul wrote to the Romans in chapter 6, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So we live and move and have our being among our fellow human beings, showing and telling them what real life is like as we live out the lives God has given us to live each day of our week. And then one day, maybe a ways off, maybe very soon, that glorious last day will come. In that day, all the promises that have been made to us by Jesus will be fulfilled. The living bread will bring us back to life raising us from the dead, and give us a newer, grander, greater life than we could ever ask for or imagine. In that day, we will be truly living, for we will live with the living bread, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter, you are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father, we believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O oh Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O oh Lord, in you have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant true unity in place of disunity, harmony in place of disharmony, and peace in the place of violence that the spread of your gospel may continue unhindered and the spirit of love abound. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By your Holy Spirit, change our old nature into your new creation in Christ. Enable us to cling to your word and sacraments, that we may put aside the cravings of our sinful flesh and be clothed with your likeness in true righteousness and holiness. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Protect your people, O Lord, from the impurities of this world. Save us from the violence outside ourselves and from hardness of heart within. By your righteous governance, preserve and guide the leaders of our nation as they execute justice in our land. By your Holy Spirit, change hardened hearts with the gospel that true peace may be established. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bestow your power of healing upon the sick that in accordance with your will they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn the death of loved ones. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, you continually feed your people, not with what we want, but with what we need. You give us bread and meat to nourish our bodies. You also feed our souls with the very body and blood of our Savior true manna from heaven. Give us gratitude for your inestimable gifts and turn away all grumbling. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord be with you.